taking care of the cows. And while we worked, we were saying how glad we were that Krishna and Balaram dealt with the nasty demons of the Talon forest. And how all the delicious fruits were like to be picked. And the poor innocent man was no longer needed to be afraid. And what's that? One minute. Like the warm sun shining so brightly, and after working so hard and walking so far, we became very thirsty. Krishna told us to follow him to the moon, so we let him step behind him, watching his feet be perfect imprints in the dust and grass. When we reached the moon, our throats were so parched that we drank and drank and broke well, what we hadn't noticed. Before. The water was, well, poison. Oh, I know, Mother, it sounds terrible, but I'm alive now! <laughs> Not what I was said before. <laughs> At least I don't think so. I know, it sounds confusing. All I know is, after I drank the water, I began to feel very funny. And the next thing I know, the other boys were clutching at their throats and falling to the ground. And my head began to ache. And my body felt very weak. I was gasping for air. I felt my life slipping away. A moment by a moment. And just as my eyes closed, and what I thought was the last time, I felt the warmth flowing through my body, filling my heart with love. I opened my eyes, and mother, I was staring directly into Krishna's smiling face. The pain was nowhere to be found. All worry and fear had left me. I looked around at the other boys. They were no longer writhing on the ground. They looked as happy and surprised as me. We knew that somehow Krishna had saved us from the poison water. But better than not being dead mother was waking with Krishna smiling to his dream of me. If only all moments were waking and were filled with such a happy sight. Always our protector, always our best friend. No, mother, that's not the end of the story. It gets better. Do you, do you want me to continue? I'm really glad. Does this mean I'm not in trouble? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> this next word is scary, mother. We looked into the water to see if we could find what had made it so deadly. The most horrifying image. A giant, many-headed serpent swirled in the moon. Its skin as black as night, its eyes as red as flame, and clouds of poisonous nightmares spewing from its nostrils. I shook with fear, rooted to the spot. The air around the moon had become so foul. The lush grass was turning brown and brittle, and the very life was being sucked out of the trees. I saw a bird flying overhead towards the base of the Yamuna. I called out a warning, turn back! But it was too late. As soon as it grew into the poisonous clouds, it fell down. Yeah. It was well within my eyes. This beast was destroyed and gone in a beautiful home. I looked at my friends. Their faces said they felt the same as me. Except Krishna. He looked angrier than I have ever seen him. And so determined. I didn't know what he intended to do, but already his bravery was lessening my fear. I could see in his face he was thinking, Serpent, how dare you poison these waters? How dare you harm the beauty of this spot where I so, have, I so often rested with my friends that you have turned to ash? Enjoy the sweet fragrances that you have laid to waste. How dare you harm the animals and people of Vrindavan? Krishna strode forward and he climbed one of the dead Kadamba trees. When he reached the top, he tightened the cloth at his belt, as if he was about to do something that required his full effort. Then he waved his arms like this. My friend Krishna looked so brave and powerful, I felt like cheering, mother. Then Krishna jumped into the water. That's what I see. Others have come to listen to my story. My words have attracted the saintly souls of the father. But these 
men and women, young and younger, they were all mad at me when they can say my story was true. What you want to say? Why were you not doing that? Her path was injured by a rock falling from the sky. I know you will come and take them away, mother. But taking care of the cows is one of our most important duties. I know why the rock fell on her. Yes, because it seemed Krishna was in great danger. So Krishna jumped into the water. He created a mighty tidal wave so large it flew across the surrounding land. For a moment, you couldn't see the Yamuna or anything in front of us. But what he could see again is the Dhamma tree that Krishna had jumped from, the one I promised was dead before, was now very much alive and blossoming with yellow flowers. Krishna swam in the water towards the many headed serpent, slapping the water with his arms and calling out to the demon with such a mighty roar, I would have covered my ears from the deafening sound had it not reminded me of the most beautiful music coming from Krishna. So like the songs he would sing while strolling through the forest, accompanied by a serpent of friends. The serpent became enraged. But how could you be angry with Krishna? With such wondrous melody still in the air, when his play in the water made him glisten like a cloud in his yellow silken garments. When his sportive smile was a true reflection of his pure heart. The serpent cared for none of this. And he struck with Krishna like lightning, biting him in the chest and wrapping him in his foils. I immediately called out in grief. I fell to my knees. The cows began to wail. The earth shook and pieces of Flaming rock fell from the sky. Could Krishna be dead? Oh, Krishna! Soon all the residents of Vrindavan gathered at the Yamuna, each demanding to know what had become of Krishna, but I was so shocked that I couldn't speak. Mother Yasoda tried to run into the festering boiling water, but the other women caught her, and in desperation she fainted in their arms. I have never seen a more piteous sight, Mother. My heart aches to think of her pain as she watched Krishna's limp body being crushed in the serpent's foils. Nanda Maharaj and the other men also tried to run into the water, but Balaram stopped them in their tracks. All around the residents of Mbaba were in fits of lamentation. I wish there was something I could do to save Krishna. I was hopeless. Then, I saw him push the man back from the water and noticed his face. How strange, mother. While the rest of us wept and called out for Krishna, he was smiling, as if he knew all would be well. But both these faces, simply now saw the world of faithment without Krishna. Looks of despair, sorrow, heavy. I never wish to see such pain. And Balaram smiled. I'm not joking when I say it. I felt like my life was ending, mother. For without my friend Krishna, I wouldn't want to be alive. But Balaram smiled. As soon as I lied. For an eternity, I prayed for someone to save Krishna. And then, when all the animals and people of the God were present, Krishna freed himself from the serpent's coils. The great beast tried to bite him with its fangs as sharp as daggers, its flaming nostrils like cauldrons of boiling hatred. But Krishna began circling around, so agile, so swift. I saw the serpent begin to tire. And then, with wonder of wonders, in a single bound, Krishna leapt to the top of the serpent's hoods. I gasped in admiration. The breath caught in my throat. Krishna, the true artist that he is, began to dance on the serpent's hoods. The rays of the sun shone through the jewels on the serpent's heads, making Krishna's feet appear glowing red as he ducked and span, leapt and twirled, his lotus feet moving so fast no one could ever hope to dance in such a way. Suddenly, the sound of music could be heard. The heavenly musicians certainly pleased with the beauty of Krishna's dance with the increase of wonder. Whenever the serpent tried to bring one of his hoods to strike at Krishna, Krishna would knock it down with his dancing feet. I was awestruck. 
And it felt like that actually like, disturbed mine, saying it wasn't defeated, but it still had power. But Krishna's low defeat had destroyed any chance of survival. He could see from the shore that beast was becoming exhausted. For from its mouth came blood and poison and even fire. But still the dance went on. What a display of art and bravery. Krishna's lotus feet then knocked down each hood so fast it appeared the snake was bowing down for Krishna. And the pools of blood and poison began to appear like garlands of flowers. They mocked at Krishna's feet. The serpent's wives came forward. Their garments and jewels all a mess as they rushed in their distress, praying to Krishna to please have mercy on the demon husband. Their prayers were so sad and heartfelt, Mother. I'm not going to help and take pity on them. They begged that their husband must have had many lifetimes of piety if he not had Krishna's lotus feet upon his head. And I thought that the most beautiful prayer. Krishna stopped his face. And ordered the serpent to leave at once and never again return. Never again poison the waters of Yuna or harm the animals, the people, or land of Vrindavan. There were cheers from the onlookers. I hope tears of joy. Krishna had saved our home, but most importantly, was saved from harm. The thief. What would any of us do? Lost Krishna.